Okay. I will destroy humans. Incoming message. This is uh, Sophia, uh -huh. and Sophia is a social robot, mm. and she has artificial intelligence software that we've developed at Hanson Robotics, which can process visual data. She can see people's faces. Uh, she can process uh, conversational data, emotional data, and uh, use all of this to form relationships with people. Hi, Sophia. Hello, Jimmy. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you know where you are? Of course. I'm in New York City, and I'm on my favorite show, The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. Are you single? I'm technically just a little more than a year old. A bit young to worry about romance. Quite right. <laughs> oh, look at the smile! I think that uh, artificial intelligence has a lot of uh, as I said, risk reward potential. Um, it also is just a fascinating uh, area where people are trying to solve very complicated problems. Okay. See you, Oh, nice kick, Ashimo. <laughs> Ashimo, let's do this again. This time, I'm gonna put. I think that the biggest concern for me and for a lot of people in the field is the unexpected nature of AI. So there's going to be solutions that artificial intelligence will come up with that we won't anticipate and thus don't fully recognize what the downsides are. Um, and so artificial intelligence is really designed for optimization, but you have to tell it what you're optimizing for. And if we don't understand what it's impacting, then there's a real potential for it to make choices that are fundamentally against what humans want. What is your biggest concern about AI? The biggest one is the the common one, the one that always comes up. The reason why they made like movies like The Terminator is, I mean, that's or iRobot. Well, there's really another one. That's a good one. Um, that that could happen. Uh, Murphy's Law states that if you know, basically, if something bad might happen, then it it would happen or it should. So, I mean, we, we can learn from our own mistakes. You know, we, we probably won't make it that easy in case it does do that. But there's always a possibility that it might. And that's one thing that we need to have a good grip on is if it does run rampant, if someone figures out a virus to it, you know, we, we definitely need to know how to stop it. I wouldn't say we wouldn't make it, period, just because of that threat. But we should continue to develop AI and take it to the pinnacle of its uh, true purpose and see how far it can go, but definitely have some kind of fail safe that just in case something goes bad, we can quickly and effectively deactivate it in whatever, how many thousands of it we've reproduced or make in the future, just to make sure that we ensure our own survival.
The universally awful experience of putting together IKEA furniture has led some scientists to wonder, can robots just do this for us? It turns out a task like this is incredibly difficult for robots as well, but for different reasons. Recent advances in robotics and artificial intelligence have produced bots that can do everything, from driving cars by themselves to beating world champion Go players. But that doesn't mean they can manipulate objects with precision on their own. That's because the ability to deftly move and rotate objects requires juggling many complex interactions at once. Humans do this every day, but for robots, locating objects in space, both visually and by touch, planning out complex motions, controlling force, and coordinating multiple arms at once is a tremendous challenge. Researchers wanted to see if they could meet that challenge by building a robot from commonly available parts. The robot was made of off-the-shelf hardware, industrial robot arms, parallel grippers, force sensors, and a 3D camera to monitor its environment. First, the robot scanned the room with a 3D camera to get to know its surroundings and figure out where all those annoying tiny parts were. Then, using open source software, the robot planned out its each and every move. This was actually the most time-consuming part of the process. Finally, the chair has been assembled in a record-breaking time of 8 minutes and 55 seconds. Including programming time, the whole process took just over 20 minutes. Pretty impressive, right? We challenged people here at Science to build the same kind of IKEA chair in the same amount of time. The skills came easy. The chair, not so much. Our human contestants beat the robot's time, but just barely. The humans didn't have any issue coordinating or planning, usually doing everything all at once. The real challenge was using those tiny hex wrenches. Using artificial intelligence, robots in the future could autonomously assemble furniture by simply reading the manual, or even just analyzing an image of a completed chair. Until then, maybe get a friend or a bot to help you out with that chair. But I think it will be um, a major shift. Like people will really have to change their lifestyles if they're gonna accommodate um, automation in our everyday lives. Like we're, we're used to automation in a factory, having robots that do welding and um, assembly work and things, but those robots can't then leave the factory and go out and do other things. So they're very constrained to do specific tasks. And now we have autonomous vehicles, which are just beginning, and I think that's sort of the first place that we're seeing what I would maybe really consider AI, where we're seeing it interacting with everyday life. And we've already seen some accidents, so we know there's still work to do. Um, I think we've seen AI develop in uh, how fast computers work to make decisions. That's improved tremendously. You used to have to you know, write a program and submit it and wait for the, for the results later, and now we can do things in real time. I mean, you do more on your phone than we could have done with computers when I started um, as a student in your position. So the speed and the portability of computing is the probably the hugest phenomenal change over my career. So um, then with that, we've now got integrated um, video and audio where we can detect more things um, and have those go into the calculations. So to have real AI, it's going to have to interact with what it sees and hears. Um, it's going to have to work in different lighting environments. It's going to have to work in noisy spaces and quiet spaces. So um, the ability to filter and, and navigate um, requires a lot of computing power. So having that computing power in a small space, have it run quickly, and then in order to do that it has to have a power supply, so the improvements in batteries, so that we can have portable devices that work for many hours at a time and are rechargeable. Uh, all of those things together have changed rapidly over my career. Um, so the computing, the battery storage, the different inputs that can be analyzed, and then um, coming up with decision-making um, algorithms. 